Hello, so it's day three of the Hunger Challenge. Um, so right now I'm making pasta, and that's what I'm going to eat today. Um, and then later on I'm going to give you my complete summary of how I think. Plus my experiences, basically, over the last three days. When I initially went out and bought all my food for the Hunger Challenge, I felt like I'd bought too much food, like it. I felt like I was I did it wrong because there was a lot of food there. Um, and it seems a lot of my fellow Team V leaders have expressed uh, some sentiment, namely that they felt that they've been having a full three meals a day and that there's very little difference between the diet they've had during the hunger challenge and the normal diet you have being a student in the, the, the normal student diet. Now, the aim of the hunger challenge was to make us empathetic with people who were in food poverty and simply eating the food that you would get in a food parcel hasn't done that. Um, so I've been thinking about this and I feel that the food aspect of a food challenge isn't really enough. I need to also reflect on what it's like to be someone in food poverty. So like I have to remember that for starters, um, everyone who gets given these food parcels has been without food for a while. Like I fasted for the day before the food challenge, but that clearly wasn't enough. Um, and you know, as soon as the food challenge finished, I've now moved back onto just eating the food that I've got in my kitchen anyway. So, and that's not a security that people in food poverty, food poverty would have. They'd have this food, and as far as they know, this is the only food they're going to get for a while still. So that's a security, obviously, that, that I have that they don't. Here's the more, most important thing about the food challenge, is that it feels like I've got a lot of food here, but maybe it's supposed to be like that. Cause it's supposed to be a lot of food so that people who are actually in food poverty then don't have to worry about the food uh, don't have to worry about supplying themselves with food because that's already taken care of so for at least those three days or so they can just concentrate on simply getting themselves out of food poverty and getting help because they don't have to worry about you know feeding themselves so they don't starve and so for a lot of the Team B leaders uh, me included certainly um, we went into the hunger challenge expecting us to, it to make us feel impoverished and to make us feel like we were in poverty and that we were struggling. And when many of us didn't feel like this, when many of us just felt like we'd been continuing on as we had before, we were confused and we felt like we did it wrong. But thinking about it, I realised that we haven't actually done it wrong. I mean, sure, we haven't got a first-hand appreciation of what it's like to be in food poverty, but what we've done instead is that we've indicated exactly how important and effective these food parcels are because it basically pushes people who are in food poverty for at least temporary time completely out of food poverty so now all they have to do is worry about starting the rest of their life out and not worry about food and it really shows how effective it is it's that effective that for us we didn't even notice a difference this is normal food for us so that's how much food it gives them it's not insubstantial and that's why it's so important to keep food banks stocked because they give out a lot of food because they have to otherwise food parcels would be ineffective at actually helping people and so to help with that Team V Newcastle Central will hopefully um, be running food drives across Newcastle to collect food for the Gateshead food bank so I'm currently in the process of finalizing details for that so make sure you watch this space so that's been the hunger challenge, uh, so I'm going to go now and continue to plan the rest of the campaign and I will see you guys next time.